People deluded, I'm back again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and in some cases, good night. I'm appreciative to have you lot tuned in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, apparently, Arsenal have revealed, or it's been revealed, what Arsenal plan to do in 2025. Allegedly, there's been an update on Martin Odegaard's injury, and there's a couple of bits and pieces. I think I speak for every football fan, let alone Arsenal fan. The international breaks are quite pointless. Where it's, you know, fair enough, if it's the Euros or the World Cup qualifiers, they need to get done. I think everyone can be with that. Considering we've just come off a, a, a Copper America and a Euros, is there any need for, you know, we kick off the league in August. You've already had one international break. Now you've got the second in October. A couple of weeks when the leagues get going again and football gets played. You got one in November, then fair enough, it's shut off until March. And then you go again and again and again. Footballers are guinea pigs. Fans are taken around the houses. A bunch of pointless fixtures. But the fat cats that make those decisions that impact the sport we know and love and have loved for many a years, whether you're young and old, this is where it is, people. So, yeah, big up you lot. The international break's dead, but the content has to keep swinging. And I have to keep bringing you lot content. I miss you lot, really and truly. I wish there was a reason to go live. But nonetheless, uh, let's crack on. Uh, Raya's been named September's Men's Player of the Month. Big him up for that, Arsenal fans. I think he deserves it. I, who would I went for? Maybe Kai Havertz or Saka. Saliba could have been there. I think Timbers has a shout. But yeah, allegedly Arsenal are plotting a deal to sign a new striker in January's transfer window, despite Kai Havertz's recent performances. Um, that is according to former Man United and Spurs chief scout Mick Brown. Fair enough. I'm sure he's well connected and he's got friends everywhere. But nobody really knows what Arsenal intend to do half the time in the market. And also, how would the next Spurs and United guy being the note to break this i don't know people but that's what he's saying and we'll crack on because it does correlate things this is just taking my eye people alexander is that will be considering his future at st james's park after anthony gordon's news uh, i think he's probably in line to get a bumper new contract of his own if i'm honest with you uh newcastle sources significant jonathan david update newcastle continuing to monitor jonathan david so you've now got arsenal inter ac newcastle and a bunch of clubs looking at jonathan david who could be available for 20 million in january would you not do that or you know he could be available for free next summer in fact you can actually if you're a foreign club talk to him for free come the january transfer market and i think even in france it's a bit like in italy if their contracts are running down you can actually talk to them at around the same time charles watts has spoken on benjamin sesco and said i still think there's a chance that arsenal will revisit their interest in benjamin sesco at some point maybe even next summer a lot of the groundwork was done before the summer window and i don't believe there's been any sort of breakdown in relationship behind the scenes just because sesco opted to stay put i'm sure arsenal understood his decision at the time because to be honest it made a lot of sense from a footballing and development point of view looking at how things have gone sesco is playing regularly and he's scoring goals and he's developing nicely Start Started the season a bit slow, finding his goal scoring boots on Edison people of Atalanta, who's quite a tough tackler. Wouldn't mind him at Arsenal to replace Jorginho and Partey, who were both in their last years of their deal. To be fair, Partey's form has been good and he maybe could have been nominated for September's player of the month. But Arsenal are looking at midfield options ahead of the summer with the futures of Jorginho and Partey very much in doubt right now. I'm sure Edison's name would have been discussed given the form he has been in of late, but I can't say for certain whether he is a player they are seriously considering right now. It's just a bit too early for that. And respectfully, Charles Watts is not Edu, he's not Mikel Arteta. Oh, like they don't know what the club's doing. They can do guesswork, which is essentially journalism. Now, Charles Watts, what he said might correlate with this. Apparently, Arsenal have been given a big boost in their hopes of signing Benjamin Sesko in 2025. After it was revealed, he has a gentleman's agreement to leave Leipzig next summer. Didn't we hear that already? Um, we all know he didn't move to Arsenal or Manchester United or Chelsea or any of the clubs, AC Milan, any of the clubs he was linked with during the summer. Apparently, upon signing a new contract with Leipzig in June, Sesko secured a gentleman's agreement with his club that will allow him to leave in 2025. It's not clear if this agreement is activated in January or June, but Arsenal will be able to sign the striker next year at some point. I would love to sign a striker, <clears throat> apologies, in January to give us a boost for Premier League and Champions League potential honours, but I can only see a big ticket item like that because his release clause has been removed in the summer. And also, people, is it just me? But a gentleman's agreement is fine, especially if both people honour it. But in like, like, in like in business, football is quite ruthless. If it's not in cold heart, right, and you've got a gentleman's agreement to leave at X amount, 
where do you go with that? Because people can turn, people things could turn very ugly. You got to remember, Sesco's an appreciating asset, and with them giving him a new deal, I don't. It's still not known to me if they've still got a release clause. All the aces are in their hands. Of course, it could get ugly. Players can go on strikes and do things like that. Leipzig are obviously respectfully a selling club. They know we get some talents and develop them. We sell them, particularly to the Premier League or you know the top European clubs for a handsome profit. So I have to see. Um, apparently, he was our number one attacking target during the past summer transfer window. We'd been in negotiations for several weeks with Le Leipzig and Sesco and believed that a deal was all but done with only some formalities to complete before the 21-year-old would agree on personal terms. Sesco has made it clear in negotiations that he wanted to join Arsenal over other interested clubs such as AC Milan and meetings with Sesco's entourage had, had all pointed to the striker joining Arsenal. I wouldn't say it came as a shock because when you read that Athletic article about our summer transfer, for a window we wanted to get the deal done at a certain date Sesco wanted clarity over his future before going into the Euros those dates didn't match he signed a new deal we didn't sign a striker or an attacker really I know we got Sterling on loan so we'll have to see the Gunners remain interested in Sesco ahead of 2025 and are expected to return for the striker which I hope's the case Arsenal have no intention of parting ways with Gabriel Jesus during the upcoming transfer window according to club sources um it's been a I've actually just done a video on, on Gabriel Jesus and my personal feelings, so watch out for that, folks. But doesn't surprise me. Unless an offer that you can't refuse comes, why would you sell? Regardless of his form, you need bodies. There's a lot of football to be played, you know, from now to the end of the season. Think about all the injuries and talking points and fitness and all the things we've gone through. Bearing in mind the, the, the season has only been going for a couple of months doesn't make sense to let him go in January, if not for nothing more than having a body in the squad. Allegedly, in the summer, we were offered Ferran Torres, um, but the Premier League outfit, us, turned down the move. Can't blame us for that. We're always linked with him. And yeah, I guess, you know, I don't know if Arteta was actually there when Ferran Torres was at City. I think he was. I could be wrong. Let me know, people. But yeah, obviously, he might have worked with him before. They're both Spanish. He can play across the front three. Might have been available for quote-unquote cheap. But beyond that, it just seems like it's always one that's paper-led. Apparently, Arsenal and Chelsea are both keeping tabs on teenage sensation by Koulibaly, who played at the under-17s World Cup people um, as a centre-half, but he's better known to be able to play in the six. He's turned 18 years of age now, people. Apparently, he plays for Creation Club, NK... Kostoskila, forgive me, people. I gave it a good go. And apparently, Katafe are also interested. He's got a deal until 2027, so it's going to take, a, you know... It's going to take there. It's going to take an offer they can't refuse. Essentially, so I have to see. I want the best players from anywhere. Um, we were linked with KK. I cannot say that. Karaskila of Napoli people. Apparently, he's in negotiations to sign a new contract at Napoli, and Arsenal have been relinked with him as well as PSG and Man City. I'm not going to read too much into that. Apparently, Arsenal still maintain an interest as well as Liverpool and Manchester City in Eze of Crystal Palace. Who's is it just me? I might be making this up, but it feels like he's had a bit of a slow start to the season. The 26 year old who still has a 68 million release clause in his contract. Apparently becomes active next summer transfer window. Didn't we hear that it wasn't active anymore? I don't know, man. Um, I just I, I think he's lacking a bit in terms of consistency. But if he was available, I'm having him at the carpet. In relation to what Martin Odegaard allegedly stepped up his recovery on an anti-gravity treadmill. You see the, the, the fun little gadgets you get to work. Uh, not fun because you don't want to because you're in, you know he's injured. But fun little gadgets professional footballers get to work with. Now for me, I think at best you're going to see him as it says there potentially against Liverpool, maybe against Inter Milan. Want to have Odegaard back? I know some Arsenal fans have been running this. Oh, we look better without Odegaard. Respectfully, I respect everyone's opinion, but you got to be a serious idiot to believe that. You know, really and truly, don't you know the creativity, the silky play, the wand of the left foot stuff Odegaard does. That's one thing, but the press and all the other stuff he does he's like an extension in the same way Jorginho on the bench and you see him warming up and teaching people Odegaard's an extension in my opinion of the coaching staff as well as being our captain and a bloody good footballer anyway so big up Odegaard on his recovery hopefully you know he's he's back sooner rather than later again the Jonathan David links won't go away people Romano has said he, in brackets, David will consider several things, not just financially, the project, the managers. So he's not going to decide now. For sure, he's having conversations with several clubs, not him, his agent, clubs in England and clubs in Italy, clubs in Spain. Jonathan David is one of the biggest names on the market for the summer of 2025. Biggest, really. Again, before making any decision, he'll take his time. It's not something for now or something for 2024. I mean, on paper, is he a bigger name than potentially Kimmich, than Sane? Is he? Then Trent, because he ain't signed a new deal at Liverpool. 
and you know, I think I think Romano might be getting a little it's something in his pocket for this because he's always talking about Jonathan David. Um, Jonathan David will explore his options, but for sure, I expect him to leave Leo as a free agent. Uh, Barcelona have also been linked with him, so if he's going to leave as a free agent, I don't know if Leo want that, but it's safe to say he's not going anywhere in January. And he did score a penalty against Real Madrid. I don't know what it is with former Arsenal players, people. You know, you also the J. Emmanuel Thomas stuff, you know, with trying to bring something back for in his suitcase. Anthony Stokes apparently has been jailed for a hundred mile per hour car chase and a free. 1,300 pounds cocaine siege. Oh, he's been given 15 months in prison. Damn. Damn. I mean, the speeding thing is a madness either way. You know, thank the Lord that, you know, you're alive to be in prison because it could have went left for, for a lot of people there. Real Madrid and Saliba seem to be something that's always thrown around people. Real Madrid have made William Saliba their top priority signing next summer. The player's entourage has already been contacted with Real Madrid willing to pay whatever price to convince Arsenal to sell. I don't blame them. He's a player like that. But whatever price, where Real Madrid have let fellow top slash world-class players go because they don't feel it makes sense, I'm not sure on that. I think we're good with Saliba for a while, but the more he keeps developing and becoming a household name in football and we don't win major honours... Naturally, you've got one career to live. You've got a decision to make. I've made peace with Saliba one day playing for Real Madrid and it'll be proud, you know. I I actually think Saliba will be Arsenal's first 100 million plus sale, people. Hopefully, we can win stuff before such people. So, there's nothing there. Uh, what we got here? Charles Watts again. He said, Kirantini is not in Mikel Arteta's plans anymore. There is no animos animosity there. He knows the club has moved on and his qualities as a left-back are not what Arsenal need in the system they play. Had you been fit now, you might have got some little minutes here and there. Probably would have got started against Bolton. Tierney has continued to work his way back to full fitness after the awful hamstring injury suffered at the Euros. Had that injury not happened, I'm sure Tierney would have been playing for another club right now. He will hope to get a move in January, probably on loan, so he can get some minutes somewhere ahead of the summer when he can try and secure a permanent move away. We'll have a year left on his deal. Clearly, we're going to let him go for a cut price and then just keep it moving from that, people. Arsenal are allegedly confident Kai Havertz will be fit when the Premier League resumes. I think we all know it's a bit of dark arts with Kai Havertz. You know, you, you, you know you're always attending Germany. Germany, you got a knee issue, quote unquote. Sit, rest, have some time with the missus. We go again after the international break next week. I think next weekend we're back, people. I could be wrong in that regard. Um, if we turn this to English, because I don't understand Spanish, Mikel Moreno has said the Royal Society has not had a nice start, but I'm convinced that results will come. I think that's in relation to Real Sociedad. Is there anything in relation to Arsenal? I only care about Arsenal. You said, I am at a time in my career when I can seek to grow and win titles. Hopefully, I can help you to get, I think it means help us to get a Prem and Champions League. Um, and then he said on the differences between, you know, Mikel Arteta at the moment and his former coach, he said, I don't like comparing coaches and apparently praise both. They are two technicians of the highest level. They have magnificent ideas. They have taken incredible trajectories and they are in love with what they do. They spread the passion they put into each workout and each daily action, allowing groups to move forward and make history. They are two elite coaches. Big up Mikel Moreno. Um, I, I understand and don't understand why he went off with Spain, if I'm completely honest with you. You know, I said he ain't really... He just got back to fitness with Arsenal. You could get some minutes for the national team, which indirectly could help us. And I know it's not like a hamstring or a knee or a muscular injury. You literally just had an unfortunate incident in training where you bust your shoulder, which it seems to be all right. So you're good to go. But I thought maybe Arsenal would have held on to him like they did with Kai Havertz, like they did with Thomas Partey. They said, you know what? You lot are at London Coley. Not criticising it, them and they're no more than me, people. So let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed here, people. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Journey to 70K is still kicking. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace.